me working out is, you know, here's one and here's two. My right arm's really strong right now, just to <laughs> let you know. Hey, Nico, how are you? Good, good. Is the connection all right for you? Yeah, it's great for me. How's it for you? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so um, just to get started, where in the world are you right now? Uh, I'm in uh, basically a quarantine in Chicago. Everything's shut down right now. How are you holding up? Pretty good, pretty good. Me working out is, you know, here's one, and here's two. My right arm's really strong right now, just to let you know. It's really been hitting the gym hard. <laughs> so are you and your girlfriend living together? Are you quarantined together? Yeah, we are quarantined together. Is her name Brianna? I think I've seen her on yes. your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, her name is Brianna, yeah. How did you two meet? We had mutual friends growing up, I guess you'd say. And I knew her from like middle school and uh, she'd asked me to come over for like a New Year's party. So uh, we ended up going out to dinner a few weeks before. Things just kind of went from there, you know. Me and Brianna have been together for about two and a half years now. I mean, we've talked about, you know, possible future with each other. And I think we're both on the same page as far as marriage, kids, things like that. We've kind of taken that step an initiative to, to do that so it's, it's it's good does she know about like your past below deck like yachting <laughs> life <laughs> my name is nico they also call me freak out because of my uh misconduct actually that's quite nice uh yeah she she knows my past below deck yachting life she's just super down to earth and cool that it's like the past is the past and None of that matters, whether it's good or bad. Uh, season five, you know, I was kind of in a rough place, even filming season five uh, with everything with my family. Unfortunately, my 21-year-old little brother had fallen from a balcony, passed away, and it's hard for me to just be here at all. You know, after that, I just kind of pulled myself together, and things have been constantly going uphill from there. Uh, Career-wise in Chicago, I'm working for my family's construction company. Working construction compared to every day waking up a new country. And I, I miss it, I do miss it, but it's something that I don't think I'd ever go back to. After the charter season of uh, season five, uh, that was actually my last yachting experience uh, ever, actually. Uh, it was just starting to get a little bit too much. I kind of ended in a rough way with the season. You know, I still have a uh, passion for it, you know, and so we, I still go boating and stuff. And I think the furthest step I'd go to going back would be to um, owning my own little boat and renting it out maybe to people, but mostly for pleasure. It's more of like a settled life than, you know, than the, the life of a yachty. You know, from the age of 18 till uh, 24 when I left, I believe it was, 24, 25, it was just so unsettled that, you know, as you grow up and you mature, you kind of figure out what's important in life. And I think I'm right where I need to be right now. How would you describe your working relationship with Captain Lee? I would describe it as really good. Like I can go talk to him almost like a, almost like a father figure, you know, when he's just such a nice guy that when you talk to him, you can just be real. And I never bullshit him. I was always real with him, always honest with him. I did hide a little bit of how much I didn't enjoy being around EJ, I guess would be the only thing that I really have like hid from him. We would talk and he'd ask, you know, how's everything going, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, it's good. Because I, I deep down did have a thought that me and him would resolve all this and everything would be good. And it just kept getting nastier and nastier. And, you know, I, the last thing I want to do is disappoint Lee. But other than that, I've been an open book. Something that came up in Below Deck Season 7 a lot was that um, people thought Captain Lee uh, gives Kate preferential treatment. I'm sorry for any worry. Last thing I wanted to do is go into Pecan and try and find Kate. You gotta kinda take it in the right way when I say it too, because uh, yes, he does give her preferential treatment. There's no doubt about that. But when you've been working with someone so long, it's, you're more than just a crew member. Kate's like family. She's like a daughter to me. But this is unacceptable. And so when you're doing certain things, it's like, hey, you know, you know you're doing it wrong, but cut it out. Rather than like come down on her and like demean her, or yell at her, whatever the case is. So the way he treats her, do I disagree with it? Absolutely not. But is there preferential treatment? Yeah, for sure. 
actually seeing him for the 100th episode in New York was, you know, pretty amazing. Uh, you know, he went through a tragedy himself, losing his son, and uh, we had a nice little talk, and I think he kind of got a little bit more of an aspect of where I was emotionally during the filming, because we didn't really end things on good terms. Uh, you know, I kind of just let him say what he had to say, which was, which was right, everything he said at the reunion. I never would have given him that promotion. You wouldn't? No. Why? Didn't earn it. Well, I'm gonna blame this, I'm gonna blame that. I wasn't myself, I was this, I was that. I don't care. Uh, hearing him say he regretted promoting me was kind of like a, a big big stomp on the chest. Uh, I was kind of holding back the tears a little bit at, at the end of that. I didn't really have much to say. It was just like really hurtful because I felt like no one understood where I was and where I was coming from and why I was acting that way. Nothing's justified because we are humans and we make choices, but I would have to agree with a lot of points that he said, but there was a lot of things that weren't seen by everyone and by him. And, and so it's kind of hard to like fight for that. You just kind of got to take it. But deep down, I know inside, like, yes, I did make a lot of mistakes and things were out of line. I should have acted that way. But at the same time, I was right about certain things and it just wasn't seen that way, you know, so. It, it just kind of stings a little bit. When I saw him the next time, it was kind of more of like, you know, I see the way you acted and it was wrong, but I understand now why you acted that way. And it was just really respectable. And it was just a really good talk. And my girlfriend met him and just, we had nothing but good things to say about Lee. What was your reaction when you heard that Kate decided to leave Below Deck? I wasn't surprised. I thought it would actually come a little bit sooner. Just when we were filming, there were certain times where like she was just kind of over it. I thought, I thought after season four she was going to leave and then she's back for five and then she did six and seven. And I mean, she obviously enjoys the lifestyle of, of that, and I think that's great if everyone's different. That night of the 100th episode in New York, I had a really bad experience with her, which me and her have always been friendly, but I don't know what her problem was that night. She was kind of a little bit agitated uh, about something that happened that night, but uh, definitely when me and my girlfriend were talking to her, she like was not having it. And when I was doing the seasons with her, we've always been friendly and always had a good relationship, I thought. I love Nico so much. He's so cute. I think near the end, maybe she was just exhausted from it all, or I, I, I don't know enough to even make a comment on the way she was feeling or what was going on. So that 100th episode um, reunion on Watch What Happens Live was pretty amazing. It was very fast, very fast. There wasn't really much. I thought there was going to be a little bit more said, but it was very brief. I think you could have crammed it in if Rocky didn't talk so much, you know what I mean? Pound it, pound it. Okay. No, no. Crazy Rocky. Was that your first yeah. time meeting Rocky? That was my first time meeting her and hopefully the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Never met anyone like her in my life. What was that oh, night yeah. like? Uh, you know what? I actually had a really amazing time. Went to a bar afterwards with some of the crew and uh, I'll hang out and, and uh, I just kind of avoided Trevor. You know, he's getting his shit together and he's got a daughter and everything else. And I think that's great for him, but just definitely a person that like I, if I saw, I probably wouldn't go say hi. And it just, not much has changed when you, when you really talk to him and get to know him. Meeting David, meeting Josiah, hanging out with Kelly again, uh, seeing Ben again, Lee again, which is awesome. Uh, me and Josiah ended up like, going out all night, going back to my hotel room, talking all night, walking to McDonald's, getting a Big Mac at like four in the morning. It was quite the after party and pre-party, hanging out with all of them. They're just amazing people. Do you still watch Below Deck? Did you continue to watch it after you were on the show? After I was on the show, uh, I did not really continue to watch it. Here and there, I'd like click it and watch an episode. I just, I don't know, some of the crew members, I really just weren't about. Nothing against them, not even talking shit. I don't know, it was the, the guy from the med, uh, that, that, uh, well, actually, um, shit, what was his name? I forget his name. The guy in the med, I just wasn't, like, a fan of that, like, sings and raps or whatever. Caught 20 mil, now that's a lot. We have food and drinks, and don't forget the toys. We suit everyone for all the girls and boys. Everyone loves Colin. I know. <laughs> You're the only one who Colin. doesn't. He's the only one, I'm sure he's a good guy. <laughs> That's okay, you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, I just, I don't know, something about it, I just, it kind of ruins it for me. 
That's I, fair. I'm sure. I'm sure he's a good guy. <laughs> How do you feel about your experience on the whole? Overall, uh, I think I had a decent experience uh, watching it, especially season five was a little bit of cringeworthy. You know, I was kind of just acting like a immature little, you know, little shit. Uh, after everything with uh, my younger brother. My little brother just passed away. He's 21, like two months ago. I kind of uh, hit, I guess, an uh, all-time low for about uh, a month or two long. You know, I'd still try and call his phone and he doesn't pick up, and he's never going to. Can't imagine what you went through, but my heart goes out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's been a f***ing hard three months. Uh, below Deck had called and mentioned they wanted to do another season with me, so I was like, you know what, this will be good for me to kind of reset. I was just a ticking time bomb. I really was with everything. And then you mix alcohol with that, and that is a recipe for disaster. And I know your other brother, Josh, made an appearance in season five. <laughs> um. <laughs> it was funny. It was hilarious. I mean, looking back at it, um, it was pretty dramatic. Let's see the bottom of your feet. All right, they're dirty. We'll wash them. You want to get that all over our boat? You were. Come on. He's just the funniest person I've heard that, like, even when he's kind of being a dick and sarcastic, he's like actually trying to be funny. These guys are dicks. Like brother, like brother. Yeah, great minds think alike. <laughs> I guess we really just didn't uh, didn't enjoy EJ's presence, but it's it's in the genes. It's in the genes, I guess. I don't know. Me and EJ just really didn't really see eye to eye. You know, I you know at the end of the day, he's he's not a bad guy. We just didn't click. We didn't. He kind of goes by the books with everything and. I do think your moment with EJ where he tells you it's my deck now, buddy boy, is like one of the most iconic below deck moments. It's my deck now, buddy boy. The whole like buddy boy thing, I just didn't know if I should laugh or, or just be even more mad. It almost got pretty nasty. It, it, it just was one of those like cats clawing at each other, you know? And I know Lee's actually like uh, like close family friends with him too, so like I knew he's gonna take his side because of that, but I don't want to hurt my relationship with Lee either. It's just kind of one of those shitty situations. I think you said in that moment, um, it, it's your boat. This is my boat. Uh, I think I was just, uh, had a little bit too much to drink, was being a little bit cocky. So I just kind of, I don't know, I guess took it to heart. My emotions were going crazy to begin with, and uh, it just, it was, it was ugly. You gave an ultimatum uh, in that uh, moment. <laughs> if tomorrow I'm not boasting, I quit. Uh, you know, I just saw that on the freaking Bravo that they they put that on. They're like, oh, great. My girlfriend's like, oh, really? She goes, I quit. I quit. <laughs> like, oh, it was funny. Yeah, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel like embarrassed about that moment, oh, or how do you God. feel? I, I, don't, I don't ever quit anything. I, I I really don't. Face got all red. I'm like, you know, I want to quit, right? So. <laughs> Were there any other moments where you seriously considered quitting Below Deck, either in Season 4 or Season 5? Uh, there was a point uh, about mid-season. Mid-season, three quarters way through, and I was just sitting on the dock. <laughs> just, it's just a lot, you know? I just, just want to be home right now. I, mean, I, was, I was crashing pretty hard, and uh, uh, it was just one of those moments like, what am I even doing here? So it's like a jam-packed roller coaster for six weeks and by the end of it you're just like i just want to go home was there anything um during your time on below deck that you just wish cameras weren't there you wish cameras didn't capture this moment uh the only time really that with the cameras would be uh, uh in the bathroom you always feel like your mic is on well it is on all the time so you're going to the bathroom and you just feel like it's like the biggest invasion of privacy sometimes i'd be peeing and be like did you count how long that one was, you know? <laughs> there's cameras around you 24 seven and not just one, there's multiple. And like cameras in the ceilings, microphones, cameras in your bedroom, cameramen following your bedroom. What I would have known, like, probably would have like brought better clothes. But you're in uniform most of the time. <laughs> I know, but when you go out, you have personal clothes. And then again, when I was there, you couldn't wear certain clothes with like brands, stripes, dots. And so I only had like four shirts that I could wear. I'm like, really? <laughs> but uh, I, you know, the, the one experience that I did have with the show that like I really missed the most was 
actually the the cameramen and the people that were involved with the show because they would always yell at me like stop doing this or that so like i would always um you know one person in particular this guy montez you know i'd be looking at the camera and like i'd like lick and then he'd lick back and like it was the funniest thing ever it was totally breaking the fourth wall there's actually a part in season four where i'm looking at kyle and we're in the windows and i'm like going down the escalator or the elevator and because like you knew Montez was looking. So like you just had to do something funny. How did below being on Below Deck kind of impact your yachting career and maybe your relationship with other people in the industry? Uh, in the industry, as far as people my age and my positions, they thought it was cool. But as far as getting hired on a boat, I hit it on my suit every time. And then the captain would be like, why didn't you tell me this? And I'm like, hey, I'm not a bad guy. Like, you like me, right? He's like, yeah, if I would have known this, I wouldn't have hired you. I wouldn't say it's because of the wild antics because things get way crazier. But I just think the fact that, you know, you're known for being on the show and it's dramatic and the fighting and stuff, even though that does really happen, you just get kind of blacklisted. And it's kind of a shame, but certain people I would get it, but not everybody. And how would you say being part of Below Deck has changed your life? Uh, it was just one of those great experiences. You know, you, you don't really have that like relationship with a lot of people that I have, even with people from other seasons where they just get it. What you're watching, what's happening. Like I can watch the sailing season and be like, oh, I know what's going on right now. And, and then just have that bond as well. And it's just kind of this unwritten bond that you have with everyone that's done it. Cause there's only a handful of people in the whole entire world that have done it, you know? So it's kind of cool to have that.